Hello people, welcome. <clears throat> In this video, we want to look at the uses of loop diuretics, high ceiling uh, diuretics or furosemide or furosemide uses. That is what we want to look at. First of all, let us take off a recap of what we have seen so far. We saw what diuretics do. They dilute the urine. So you can give it to people who have edema or if they have high blood pressure. So to reduce the water in the bl blood, to reduce the water in the body, you can use diuretics. So it will lower the blood pressure. We saw the classification of diuretics. Loop diuretics or high ceiling diuretics are here. They are called high ceiling just because they have high efficacy. Then you have the thiazide, thiazide like compounds. These are medium efficacy. Then you have the weak diuretics like carbonic anhydrase inhibitors like acetazolamide then potassium sparing diuretics like aldosterone antagonists like spironolactone then um, amyloride then you have osmotic diuretics like mannitol etc okay so we saw some photos we saw that most of them are given oral except osmotic diuretics are given injection in uh, loop diuretics you have option of IV that means furosemide you will get tablets also you can give IV also then um, we saw site of action the loop diuretics they work on the loop of Henle and uh, in the ascending limb of loop of Henle and in that ascending limb also thick part that is where they work what exactly they do also we will see they inhibit the sodium potassium 2 chlorine co-transporter. When this gets inhibited, sodium, potassium, chlorine, everything will be lost from our body in urine. Okay. We we'll come to that, don't worry. Then we saw the examples furosemide, furosemide, they are rapid acting, short acting. The other drugs actually have more potent, they're more potent and they have better oral bioavailability. They are Bumetanide torsimide. So the comparison shown here, furosemide will do the maximum sodium excretion and uh, it is very highly efficient. That's why it's called high ceiling diuretic. How many people are sleeping? Okay, don't sleep, wake up. Then we saw how exactly it works. So this is the normal functioning of the sodium potassium 2-chlorine uh, co-transporter. It, push, it uh, takes uh, two uh, uh, positive and two negative ions and it sends the uh, potassium and uh, sorry, it sends the sodium and chlorine into our body, into the blood. The potassium, you know, it just escapes. It just enters like as though it is entering but actually it will escape off, okay. In this process what happens, even calcium and magnesium, when you give loop diuretic, it will inhibit this uh, sodium potassium 2 chlorine co-transporter is inhibited. So when loop diuretic is given, this entire thing is inhibited. So into the urine, water and all will go, sodium will go, potassium will go and 2 chlorine also will go. Along with that what will happen, whatever calcium, magnesium we are getting absorbed, even that can't get absorbed. So calcium, magnesium also will be lost into the urine. This much you understood, right? This is the diagram from KD Tripathi where they are explaining that uh, uh, calcium, magnesium which we are getting absorbed earlier, now they also won't get absorbed because it has a potential to stop the absorption of calcium and magnesium also. That is because of the charge, you know, because of the charge in the tube, tubular fluid charge. So the lumen, lumen also will have charge, right? That charge, because of the charge, even calcium, magnesium, which we are getting absorbed through, uh, what was that name called, guys? Hold on. Because of that diffusion, um, this cannot get diffused anymore. So calcium, magnesium also will be lost. Okay, let's quickly look at the uses now. Edema, guys. So if there is edema, definitely you will give diuretic, correct? Now, what could be the cause of edema, renal cardiac, hepatic, so many causes can be there. So edema, you can define that also. So edema is swelling caused due to excess fluid trapped in body tissue. Okay, you can explain all that if you want. There could be blocked lymphatic drainage or high um, pressure, hydrostatic pressure could be more or lower oncotic pressure can be there in the vascular system, etc.
So in all those cases you will give furosemide or loop diuretic so that the person can lose sodium and lose water along with it. Now coming to pulmonary edema, if there is pulmonary edema like because of left ventricular failure that time they will give IV furosemide. What exactly it does look at this diagram. So you will give furosemide which is a diuretic. What will the diuretic do? Actually just uh, one thing here, the action here is very different. Okay, It's not on the kidney. They are saying that it will do vasodilation. Okay, And because of vasodilation, the uh, load on the heart will reduce. So that is how they are relieving the pulmonary edema. So this is a different mechanism guys. This mechanism is different. Okay, mechanism of action here is different. Coming to cerebral edema, actually they will prefer uh, IV mannitol with furosemide. That is a better uh, combination. So we have covered all types of edema. Then the other thing we wanted to give uh, diuretics, remember, was for hypertension. Especially uh, it is used for hypertension, which is due to um, congestive cardiac failure or renal failure. Or in hypertensive emergency, only they will give uh, uh, this loop diuretic. So what will happen? Water is lost, blood also will lose water, so the volume of blood will become less, so the blood pressure will become less, so hypertension will come down. So that was the whole point. So and this is used only in this kind of emergency situations of hypertension. In uncomplicated primary hypertension, it is not used because it has very short duration of action. Okay. In those uh, in uncomplicated hypertensions, they will prefer thiazides. Okay. Then moving on to blood transfusion. If a person takes blood transfusion and his blood volume increases, that could be dangerous. So when they are doing blood transfusion, they will give these diuretics so that the volume overload will not happen. Then to treat hypercalcemia of malignancy. See, basically what you have seen so far, loop diuretics were given as to uh, uh, throw out sodium from the body. But as a side effect, even calcium is getting thrown out of the body. So they will use this side effect to treat hypercalcemia of malignancy. They will give it with saline. Obviously, they will give sodium and chlorine and all that. So those things won't be lost, hopefully. Only calcium should get lost. Okay. Because that person has hypercalcemia. Is it clear? Very easy, right? What did you learn? So far, uses of uh, loop diuretics or furosemide. Basically, we will give it in edema, all types of edema. And then we will give it in hypertension so that we can reduce the blood volume. And then we will also give it uh, in ter terms of, um, uh, what was that, um, hypercalcemia. Because it is a side effect no? to uh, have calcium loss. So we will give it off in uh, hypercalcemia, loop diuretic. Okay, very good. Now let's move on to the adverse effects of furosemide. See, this much you already know, it causes uh, hypokalemia, hyponatremia, natremia, that is nothing but uh, less sodium, hypocalcemia, hypomagnesemia, all this not at all difficult, you will write this in exam, no doubt. Hypokalemia, <clears throat> so that's why you should always give it along with potassium sparing diuretics. Hyponatremia, like acute saline depletion, dilutional hyponatremia can happen. <clears throat> hypocalcemia, hypomagnesemia can happen. So electrolyte disturbance is not at all difficult. These anyways you will write the adverse drug reactions. Now coming to other things that can happen. Hyperglycemia, hyperuricemia, hyperlipidemia. All these are hyper, hyper, hyper. More glucose, more uric acid, more lipids. Wow. Now ototoxicity, hearing loss can happen due to furosemide. So the salt when it goes out of balance no, in our body, you will stop hearing. So because of this in, impaired salt balance. Okay, GIT, CNS disturbances. GIT definitely you will write because you are giving it orally. All nausea, vomiting, all that you will write. CNS disturbance standard you will write all high, headache and all that. Hypersensitivity standard you will write rashes. These are all standard adverse drug reactions that you will always write. Nothing special there. So you remember... Electrolyte disturbances that anyways you will write because it is you know the action of the drug. Metabolic disturbances when it's making something hypo, something hyper also it will make. Autotoxicity uh, because of the impaired electrolyte balance there can be autotoxicity. Hearing loss can happen because of loop diuretic. Okay. Then lastly coming to resistance will happen. Now this resistance is something very important. 
look at this resistance to loop diuretic and thiazides both of them it can happen now here what happens <clears throat> um, over the long term okay though you are giving these diuretics there will be edema okay so long term there will be resistance though you are giving diuretic therapy that person is having edema what is this that is because there is a renal insufficiency so there is the kidney itself of the person is not able to filter much so that time there will there can happen that these uh, diuretics are not working okay so why it happens due to renal insufficiency like low G, uh, gfr then it can happen due to congestive heart failure there can be congestion of bubbles low absorption in the bubbles and uh, less renal blood flow can happen cirrhosis of liver so basically what and all is not working in that person kidney is not working heart is not working or liver is not working in all such cases there can be resistance to this drug also nephrotic syndrome again we are back to the kidney so there can be raised aldosterone imagine what happens if aldosterone is more potassium will be lost right and sodium is absorbed so aldosterone wants to absorb sodium so if you are giving diuretic and aldosterone levels are more then there's no point because aldosterone will make sure that sodium gets reabsorbed into the body so in all these cases there will be resistance to loop diuretics and thiazides okay so if there is distal uh, what exactly happens uh, if you give long term loop diuretics or thiazides distal nephron hypertrophy can happen hypertrophy means <clears throat> it will become more thick right so x the cell cell will be more thick yeah so that is why what is the solution you should always give loop diuretics along with thiazides okay that is the only solution they have mentioned here give loop diuretics along with thiazides especially metolazone metolazone do you know have you seen it in our classification metolazone let's go and check metolazone oh yeah it's here metolazone wait let's mark it so metolazone if you give along with loop diuretics you will prevent resistance okay so we have covered uh, the adverse drug reactions the last we have to cover is the interactions yay we reached interactions okay so interactions let us see drug interactions let's look at the easy ones only so we should give them along with potassium sparing drugs very very good right you know all that already you know all this already correct so if you give them with potassium sparing diuretics there will be no hypokalemia with amino glycosides you should not give why because both are going to be ototoxic or you'll have to be careful both are ototoxic that's all we will cover now if you want you can look at the other details uh, with nsaids they won't work they are saying if you want you can note that because uh, diuretics they need prostaglandins and nsaids will inhibit prostaglandin synthesis right so diminished effect with prostaglandins okay this prostaglandins it also came in other place where did it come here in cereb uh, in pulmonary edema why we give uh, furosemide that is because it increases the prostaglandin uh, and hence there will be vasodilation that's how it will help the pulmonary edema okay so anyways uh, don't worry much about all this let us summarize quickly summarize baby what you learned so far uses uses we will use in edema uh, hypertension then uh, hypercalcemia then coming to adverse effects we saw that it will reduce uh, sodium levels potassium levels then it will increase uh, glucose lipids correct then it will increase glucose lipids uric acid levels and it can uh, cause uh, hearing loss because it is going to affect the electrolyte balance and hence there can be ototoxicity then there can be resistance in long term use so we should always combine it with a thiazide like compound that is metolazone 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 drug interactions we saw we should give them with potassium sparing drugs we should give them uh, don't give them with amino glycosides and with nsaids also don't give okay so with potassium sparing drugs good you can give okay 
that's all for now in the next video we will uh, look at the other diuretics bye bye